Hi, Felicia. Hi. Welcome to my spinning class. What a surprise. <laughs> Ran into Felicia in the hall. No, I'm kidding. Hi, Felicia. Hi. Welcome to Supported Spindling. Thank you. I'm so excited. Yeah, we've been having a ton of fun while not filming. <laughs> so we noticed something kind of important um, in terms of size and proportions and finding the spindle that suits you best. And if you would like to show what you were trying to use before. So some of these spindles I acquired years and years and years ago, and I always felt like they were a little bit uncomfortable to use. They either felt like they were wobbly or they were falling out of my hands or they just wouldn't continue to spin. So I would spin with them and then they would just kind of die. <laughs> they would just stop spinning. And uh, looking at some of the other spindles that Debbie has brought, it's just really interesting to see how different they all are. And so we're trying different sized spindles. Mm -hmm. What if you put the bowl in between your legs? See mm -hmm. if that helps. And so this oh, is here's some fiber. Over, you might want some fiber. This is over twisted, so let's take this off. Here's some roving. Targy. And pull more silk. And that's a pocket size spindle, so it's a nine incher. And what Felicia had been using was this much taller one. And she's a, a petite person. So I think we wanted to kind of explain how my supported spindling experience is quite limited. Um, I've done a few spindlefuls of fiber, and I don't think I've ever applied anything from any of the supported spindles. I just kind of experiment and try out this drafting, see how it feels. But already the spindle mm -hmm. feels a lot better. And that's, we talked about over twist and how that can mm -hmm. pull your spindle right out of your hand, mm -hmm. but it looks more comfortable. That shorter spindle looks so much, look at that, you just did it. It looks so much more proportionate to you. So the thing that we were discovering about this particular spindle is that this tip right here is so mm -hmm. thin and so fine. And I think that it allows you to get more leverage. Mm. Um, you just get more spin for, for the effort. And that is the spindle that I have trouble gripping. Because it's so fine. Because it's so fine and glossy. The finish is so glossy. But I, I love the fineness of it, but the gloss is not ideal for me. So you just don't know. Right. It is kind of it's slippery, right? It feels slippery. It's a little slippery. Yeah. And whereas this was not really one that you loved, you were uh, spinning beautifully. We with used that it. One. We used it the whole class. As soon as I tried it this morning, I thought, "Oh, I love it." So you you really don't know. And you should try several. It it would be so unfortunate to give up on a skill, and frankly, a potential passion. Without a full chance, I think. You know, you hear so many people say, oh, I hear it a lot with suspended spindling. Um, oh, yeah, 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 I, my, te my spinning teacher made me do that. I hated it. <laughs> well, I would hate it too if somebody handed me a three ounce spindle and, you know, I had never touched fiber before. I'd hate that too. It takes, it takes more. It does take practice, doesn't it? Yeah. There's a lot of things to think about while you're doing this because also even just winding on and remembering to do that cross... The cross hatch? Cross hatching. <laughs> it just builds a prettier, more um, curved cup. It, it, it's not in a... Well, it's, it's helpful. It's just helpful. Like I don't have any on this one and you can tell it's just flat. Mm -hmm. But that's because I wasn't really paying attention. It's also great for when you, this area of trouble for me, this area just gets all messy and starts going, you know, it gets just all messed up. But I find that cross hatching up there kind of locks it down. I think you had mentioned to me before 
before about my spinning, how yeah. I was kind of trying to spin too vertical. Oh, I was yeah. holding the fiber too too much uh, up in the air, mm -hmm. and I thought that that was going to help, but you were saying that that actually mm -hmm. is not working out. Well, it feels really natural to just spin like this mm -hmm. with your leader up here, but your fiber star uh, your yarn bows right out, and it just doesn't adhere. It just it bows out, and you're not making the yarn you can make, and it's a weird angle. So we moved you to 45 degrees, and you put your leader out that way, and boom, you had it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was just instant that your yarn just instantly became yarn and wound on with that one little adjustment. And then the other thing I noticed is that, um, yeah, this idea of being able to hold your bowl between mm -hmm. your legs, and it's so much oh. more compact, and it's closer to you, as opposed to putting it on the table oh, yeah. and then leaning over like this, oh, which yeah. is something I think I would naturally do. I think I would too. <laughs> I'm sure I have. I think three days, four days from now, mm -hmm. if you did this for a few minutes a day, I mean, you have it. You're just learning uh, certain to finesse certain things. And I am realizing That's definitely right. the lengths are too. Like, I had right. wondered about that today as well, because I don't really think about some things when I'm doing it. Yeah, I think it is important for everybody to know that it, this takes practice. This is a, it feels kind of like trying to pat your tummy and your mm -hmm. head at the same time, mm -hmm. or rub your tummy and pat your head. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, mm -hmm. doing a bunch of different things at the same time. Um, I only started with the supported spindle. Oh, look, see, look at that. Too mm -hmm. much, because mm -hmm. I didn't wind on. Um, I only started with the supported spindle because I think a friend sent them to me, and I so admired her work, so admired her work. And I thought, I want to do that. And that's what I did. I just think it's amazing how you can make yarn in the most manual, like the least, mm -hmm. um, I don't know, just the simplest. Again, the primitive. Simplest way, just adding twist. There's no, no technology. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I think that's why I like it. I don't have to think about ratios. Not that I don't like them, but often I just want right. to spin. It's a much more intuitive way of spinning. Yeah. And I don't want to um, dare I say waste my time by just, there's nothing wrong with watching TV, mm -hmm. but I'd rather also be doing something. Mm -hmm. And I almost always, if I just feel like spinning, or if I'm just tired, 90% of the time I take, a, I take one of these spindles, grab a braid of fiber, or my most treasured uh, carded fibers, mm -hmm. like little batlets. And um, I love to think, again, I just enjoy. And before you know it, that spin's done too. It, it, be surprised by how quick it can go.